Check, check. Wow. This has uh, got a lot of volume. You might want to turn the volume down in case I get excited and raise my voice. don't want to hurt anyone's eardrums. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Glenn Victory, brother of light, friend well, of St. Germain. <clears throat> Very grateful to be here tonight in the Temple of Clarity and for all the, the work and all the commitment that Dennis has shared with us over the years to create this here and now moment. And here we are, January the 14th, 2020. Um, we all have been on our own journey, our own path, and <clears throat> it's always the eternal now where everything happens. And so how can we really experience that to its fullest? Um, how do we expand time to really be in that present moment of miracles where all of a sudden, a thousand years can happen in a blink of an eye. You look at a supernova in cosmology. You look at the birth of a child. You look at experiences that might seem so extraordinary that it has, you know, you watch a movie and it's like, if it's something that is electrifying, it can pass by so quickly. And I think that as we awaken to ourselves and really remember who we are, we can start to experience that in our life. And so the what I'm going to be talking about tonight is about um, remembering who we are. And with that, I'll say we are all gods and goddesses. And we all chose our own parents. We all created our experience. All of our greatest challenges and difficulties are ironically within them our greatest gifts and blessings. So um, what we have to learn is really as instruments of the divine, how can we tune our, our vehicle, our instrument, so our music sounds sweet, so that the uh, the story that we're the author of the 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 um, is uh, exciting. You know, how can we create music in our life that sounds beautiful? And I think first and foremost, it's looking at our relationship with ourself. You know, look at our own our own space, and are we being uh, Christ-like? I think Christ is probably one of the best examples of truth. It takes tremendous courage to be able to receive our magnificence. And um, I think there's some tenets that we can um, practice that help help to activate that, that uh, divine nature. Um, in fact, I was noticing Carlos. So he has, I was noticing his posture. And I think that what happens when we have, when I call it divine posture, it actually changes our state. And so I encourage us as we walk through life to remember that we are all interconnected. Everyone is, is part of this expansion, this experience, this creation. And so wherever you go, there you are. And when we're able to be f operating from a space of compassion and love, we can, we can be able to feel and send that love from our heart and realize that it's going to make a difference. And that's why it's so, so important to learn how, these, how do we tune our instruments? How do we make ourselves 
happy? How do we electrify, reignite that relationship with our soul so we can be like kids again? I mean, the journey of life is about, it's about, ultimately, it's sacrifice. Now, it's sort of a paradox because sacrifice doesn't sound like very much fun. <laughs> you know, you think of our brother Jesus on the cross, right? Being crucified. Yeah, and on another level, it's the most fulfilled. I mean, ask a mother who, who's given birth and who's dedicated her, her life to the, the you know, raising of the children. It's a sacrificial experience. And that's where our fulfillment is ultimately um, derived. It's the diamond that is under pressure that is able to brilliantly shine. So um, I'm going to give a little backdrop, a little foundational stuff before I go into meditation, which is something I do uh, as a practice to connect to my heart, to Gaia, to the celestial I called Gaia's brothers and sisters, you know, the other planets in our solar system. Um, one thing I think that we can always <coughs> be aware of I and get a sense of, okay, it's like, you know, the idea of the word of love is used a lot. You know, love your neighbor, love yourself. So let's just assume that we're all gods and goddesses. That's a big one because it's not conventional. But let's, let's assume that. So how do we love ourselves as a God? What's the, what's the way to really discern that? Okay? Well, I think you can look at the principle of the universe, energy. Okay? Energy, it's like ubiquitous. Where do we get our most, a lot of our energy? It's through the breath. So let's be stewards of the breath. And in fact, I have a campaign right now. It's called the Awareness Breathing Campaign. And it's a global campaign to raise awareness globally. So as we wake up ourselves, we can wake up our family, our friends. And um, a, uh, a coherent breath is when we're breathing five breaths per minute. So you guys can, you can, you know, maybe tomorrow, Find out how many breaths you're breathing, and just be just to choose. Say, I choose to breathe divinely, and it's an intention, and it helps to have that posture, and it helps to relax. And that's why meditation is so important, because in meditation, we actually relax into our body. And you know, we have five bodies: we have the physical body, we have the etheric body. And the etheric body actually has bioplasma. So that's why it's so important to keep our environments clean, to have pure thoughts, to eat healthy food, because it affects our etheric body. And then we have our emotional body. Okay, so that's why it's important to be, if we're able to stay in a higher, in more gratitude, in, in more joy, you know, just in, in have that, those emotions that are more um, higher frequency, like peace, uh, it helps the emotional body because there's been a lot of trauma on this planet. There's a lot of pain and suffering. I personally experienced a ton myself, <laughs> and it continues. And I, the more that we elevate our frequency, it's the greatest service that we can offer to our brothers and sisters. And beyond the emotional bodies, we have the mental body. So let's be stewards of our thoughts. Let's really do our best to really be mindful. And you can look in your environment. Look at I mean, look at this. I mean, I like to have the camera shoot the shoot the space here, man. Because I I don't know if they've seen what this place looks like, but it's beautiful. I mean. You look at Shamil, the angel of love, and you look at the masters, and you look at Jesus. Look at, look at Sanat Kumara. I mean, these beings right here, they radiate. I mean, they're open 
They're loving. They are, they've mastered the temple, the living temple. And we are here to do that as well. You know, and it's a de declaration. So I, I choose to receive myself. I choose to love myself. The first tenet that Jesus said, the most important tenet, love God, right? So now imagine you're God, so love yourself. That's baby it, man. That's it. L learn to love yourself. With all of your strength, all of your might, all, just it, all that you can imagine. And then as when your cup fills up and you've, you've, you've taken care of yourself, it's only natural. All you got, you, it's natural to serve. And from that space, we as a collective start to bring in and to anchor in this new reality that's happening now. We experience in that our, our relationship with angelic realm, with the elemental kingdoms, and we collectively co-create the possibility of the uh, heaven that's being built. It's, it's, it's destined, it's being called forth, and the leaders are stepping into leadership, and the light's shining forth, and it's our opportunity to start within our own self and within our family. Look at your brothers and your sisters, okay? Look at the, your family, your, your parents, your cousins. Reach out. Call them up. Say, hey, I was at... I was at the Temple of Clarity. I heard this song, and they said I should, you know, connect. That makes a difference. It really does. You don't know what a few words of encouragement will make. There's a lot of people that are waiting for your call. So that's, I implore you to listen to your heart, feel what's being called forth, and take action. <coughs> um... In fact, you can even, another thing is just pray. Pray for people. The, just the mere virtue of uh, having your heart, your, in your awareness, it literally is extraordinary. When you start studying the quantum realm, that's how interconnected we are. It's like, <laughs> so, um, what time is it? So I got, wait, how many more minutes? Like, Ten more minutes, perfect. Okay, so with the, this ten minute time, what we'll do is I'll just do a, a little meditation that I I do. I call it the Tryon Heart Flame Spinning Meditation. And um, probably haven't heard of Tryon. It's it was given me as my spiritual name, and happens to also be the smallest particle in the universe, or which is the particle of light. And you can look it up. It's pretty cool. Um, so within the, the high heart, there's, um, a, there's known as the threefold flame and that's the divine masculine, the divine feminine and the Christ child. So that actually resides within us. And that's really what's the most important relationship is our relationship with the our divine masculine, our divine feminine, and our Christ child within ourself. So as we balance those, the you know, masculine and feminine, and we nurture the Christ child, it gives birth. What does it give birth to? To joy, to curiosity, to adventure. It gives birth to life. It's the awakening. It's like, oh my God. It's I was at in Del Mar, I'm living in Del Mar currently residing there. And I was at the playground, and these little kids, there was like these three, three little girls, and the one girl, they're having so much fun, and it's so present. And that's what life is about, is really awakening the, the child and, you know, experiencing the adventure. Um, so the meditation, <coughs> it starts in the heart, in the high heart of the threefold flame, and just connect to that space within yourself, you know, the that the nurturing, loving, compassionate um, mother, you know, the divine feminine, just the source creator of all, just really feel that. And it's, it's pink in color, and, all, and then there, it's, its counterpart is the divine masculine, 
power, protection, production, just the, the confidence of just to be able service, you know, just that certainty. And that's also within us, that divine masculine. And then the golden one is the the Christ, the innocence, the Christ child, the innocence, the uh, purity, the curiosity. So you can recon you can connect into that within your, your heart space and the threefold flame and imagine it descending down through your shishumna, which is your tuba light, down all the way into Gaia's crystalline core. And it's ironic, that's actually our 13th chakra. So we're part of her. It's, that's how connected we are. It's like the cells in our body, we have all these trillions of cells. So now we're all trillionaires, right? We all have trillions of cells. So we're more fluent than we realize. Um, so <coughs> from connecting to Gaia's crystalline core, often do what I do is I'll imagine, like right now I'm imagining this purple tube of light and it ascends all the way up to about two or three feet below our feet. So we've got this tube of light that's connecting up. And then bef below our feet, imagine this disc, a purple disc. And this purple disc forms. And from that purple disc ascends a tube of light. So now imagine right now this tube of light ascends above our head to about three feet above us. So now we're standing in this effervescent tube of light. It's like, and if we look right here, you can see that tube of light. So that's, that's it. And it's good practice to activate it. It purifies, cleanses, detoxifies, detoxifies ourselves. And from there, go right up into the I am presence. You know, I'll go like maybe 300 feet up. And, um, it's like oftentimes I see a gold and white light. It's like dancing and connects up into the I am presence. Ah, and just, uh, just receive, receive, receive. And just imagine that the tube of gold and white light descending down and just receiving that down and through our crown chakra. And, uh, it's uh, it's a good visual practice to to connect to ourselves. Now, when I when I do this, actually, I'm I'm spinning. I, I do the Tibetan rites pretty much on a consistent basis, so I'll spin while I do this visual practice. And what happens when you start realizing that these are divine temples? You want to start to move and develop the proprioceptor awareness, which is so you can sort of really have body-mind connection. You want to start to develop strength. Y you know, I mean, t for us to go in and change the, change the Congress, to change the uh, direction of our country, you know, just stand for truth, it's embodying it. It takes tremendous power, tremendous discipline. So, um, the Tibetan writes all kinds of activities to build your body strong, you know, strong body, strong mind. Um, and there, what I'll also from Gaia, what I do is I'll I'll send out the, the three those three colors, pink, gold, and, and uh, blue, and like rings from Saturn. I'll connect them all the way to all the other planets, so that connects to you can sort of because we have a relationship with all those planets. And then I'll bring back, bring the rings back into Gaia's crystalline core, and then take the light back up into the heart. And then I'll um, uh, actually, oftentimes I'll have a like a golden or a white egg of light. So just imagine yourself that you you know that you're protected, you're safe, you're in this egg of light, and and it's like time to play. I mean, hey. And with that, I think I'll end and ask us all to please stand. And <coughs> I'd like for us all to uh, 
Uh, actually, my last name is Vickery. It used to be Victory when I was Tryon. My name was Tryon Victory for about four years. It's another story. Um, but we're going to the Victory stance is where we put our hands up into Victory. So you want to get into that stance, and you want to get your, your feet about shoulder width apart, and you want to breathe in really deep. Get the oxygen in the body. Get the oxygen pumping in there. And now what we're going to say is we're going to say, we are victorious. We're going to say it three times, okay? So good, good, good. You got good. You, I, mean, I like that. You're looking good. She's got that victory extension. So get the hands up high. Ready? We're going to go after. I'm going to go three times. We are victorious. Ready? We are victorious. We are victorious. We are victorious. Okay, now come come together. Put our hands together. We're going to make a circle. And uh, just know that this is, this is a family, and we're connected, and miracles are happening. We're in the age of miracles. So may blessings happen to all of your family, your friends, and know that you are. You are divine and sacred. Aho. So, Glenn, you're not off the hook yet. So there may be questions, you know, about um, I was following right along with you. I, I, I love I've I learned a lot of new insights about the threefold flame and seeing the gold and the Christ uh, consciousness, the Christ child, the birthing of the Christ child. So much could be, um, you know, just. You know that that's almost a book there you have uh, in in this. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask, Glenn Victory? Vic Victory, but yeah, I like Victory. <laughs> so um, I have a question about the thirteenth chakra. Yeah. Uh, Can you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So most people are familiar with the seven chakras on the body. So we have seven chakras in our physical body, and then we have six chakras that are off of our body. So the 13th chakra is the chakra that we share with Gaia, or Mother Earth. And um, it's a, yeah, so that's sort of the. So it, that is the number 13th? chakra yeah and uh, you do the meditation with it turning the 13th chakra into a, like a violet um, spinning how did you do that so okay so Gaia is just like we are we are all embodiments and so she's an embodied being like we are beings and we're connected with her so um, just like in the cells of our body we have all these organs I, that's Really, you know, if you want to um, be more Christ-like, it's alchemy. It's really understanding the lymphatic system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system, the nervous system. We have all these systems in the body. And so how can we really make sure they're healthy and happy? And it's like nutrition. It's all these different practices. And it's, it, you know, I mean, to start to youth, because these bodies are designed to live seven to nine hundred years, um, and the person who's going to live a thousand years already been born. Um, but for us to start to actually look and feel younger, it's being masterful of a lot of the fundamentals. And first, most important thing is to is our thinking. So if you start to believe that, wow, is it possible for me to actually look and feel younger next year than I do now? So that's a thought form. And if you start to uh, understand that, y w you can actually upregulate genes that are aligned with that reality. Because we have a genome that is, um, 
this whole reality is I'm c actually from a, a star system, Sirius, I'm in their Sirius A and Sirius B. I've got a lot of experience with Sirius B. So this, this planet's been, it's extraordinary, and it's holy moly Batman. It's really been through some amazing uh, things. You know, just like even the mercury on, on in the atmosphere right now, mercury in the, in the oceans, you know, people, it's in the teeth, and it's, it really has a adver difficult adverse effect on our, on our ability to youth because it shuts things down. And there's a lot of pollutants, you know, with the chemtrails, cadmium, aluminum, bromium. Oh, those things are very difficult. You know, the fluoride in the water. Oh, my God. Shut down. Talk about the, the pineal gland. I mean, the pineal gland is like our, our master gland. And, you know, when you start to understand alchemy, you want to raise the energy from the root chakra. So you actually con you constrict the perineum and you get the um, the energy moving up through the shishumna all the way up to the pineal. And there's four different, actually, chemicals that the, pin the pineal can produce. And they're they start really connecting you into your divinity. Um, although to fully experience that, it's sort of a it's a it's a it's a stairway, so to speak. So. So you start with a thought form. You thought, you know, you want, you desire to raise this energy, right? And then um, what's the other part of the alchemy for raising? <coughs> Physical mm. activity, yeah, diet. Yeah, it's, it, it's fir first, first the thing you got to re remember and accept that you're divine, you're God. You're div you are a sacred divine being. You're a trillionaire. You've got trillions of cells. How do you make e how do you make a cell happy, right? You start to remember to breathe. Most people on the planet are not breathing properly, so that's I, that's why the, the breathing is so important. I had a friend who actually Saint Germain. He um, actually more of an acquaintance. Um, Saint Mer Saint Germain materialized. In fact, I've known three people where Saint Germain's materialized physically in their presence, and he. Um, I mean, how amazing would that be to have St. Germain just show up? <laughs> I mean, I'm down for that. I'm totally looking forward to the, that, that experience. So what he said was for him to fast. It's like, okay. So he thought maybe he'll fast for five or, you know, five or ten days. He ended up fasting for 55 days. Yeah. So the body is pretty extraordinary. Alchemically to... Master it is a, a journey. There's lots of um, things to understand. I think just, you know, just if you start with thought management, so just start declaring, you, I'm a sacred divine being. I love myself wholly and completely. I devote every day to living divinely by, you know, by breathing divinely, by embodying divine posture, by eating divinely, and just learn and and it just by the virtue, you know, it says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. And, um, you know, we have our angelic helpers, ask, ask them for help. You know, at, it's like, you know, they talk about mentors, masterminds. I mean, those are sacred. And, um, yeah, I, you know, 2020 is a year of vision. Um, and there is an extraordinary amount of light that's coming in and um, it's really I mean Mother Earth's fine you know she and you know she's birthing so it's like okay let's help her birth orgasmically so she can enjoy the journey you know I mean right now the oceans have a lot of plastics in them and we're still polluting like crazy you know so Everything makes a difference, and everything counts. Um. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. That was wonderful. Um, if anybody online has any questions or want to get in get in touch for more information, where can they uh, contact you? Do you have your own website? 
Yeah, it's uh, discoverdivinity.com. Discoverdivinity.com. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for coming here and giving all those insights. Um, I really enjoyed it. I You're like an encyclopedia. I'll have to get you on the phone and do some more talking. <laughs> Uh, we're going to end the broadcast right now and have some social time. I want to thank everyone on, online and just a reminder, the um, couple of events that are coming up. We have an expo, right, Lisa? Sunday the 26th here in Carlsbad at the... Uh, Lisa and I will be there in um, St. Eric. If you haven't met St. Eric, it's, huh? St. Ava, maybe be there. Uh, um, and that's at the um, Howard Johnson, is it? Carlsbad Holiday Inn, right, on Palomar Airport Road. There is also going to be a four-day retreat here on, um, starting... Um, February 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. David Christopher Lewis will be here. The Ascended Masters will be here. It'll be, it's a um, meditation conference with the Divine Mothers of Grace and Beauty. There'll be live messages from the Ascended Masters and the Divine Mothers. And we'll have little outings and things uh, that we'll be doing. You can find out more information on the heartcenter.org website or Meetup. I also posted it on Meetup and on Facebook. So take a look at the, uh, the event section there. Also, we will be in Los Angeles uh, at the LA Expo, the big one at the LA Hilton in um, the airport there. So uh, David will be giving talks there, uh, workshops, and soul-raising sessions that weekend of the 8th through the 12th. So there's going to be, uh, uh, the February is going to start off with a boom. We're really, this, uh, this whole month is going to be very, very busy here. And for the Heart Center movement, as uh, we are doing these outreaches, and David will be doing these soul raising sessions, and you had one too, right? Yeah. Ben? You want to share anything with, about your experience? Uh, yeah, it was great, man. He uh, gave me a lot of just positive feedback. It was. Um, Sort of like, you know, you got green lights. <laughs> sort of, like, it's like it's all all systems go. Time to do what you 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 saw already, huh? Yeah. The Holy Spirit gave you the full. Yeah, it was. Go yeah. for it, huh? Yeah, because oftentimes you know we think, oh, I can't do this, or oh, I don't, you know, and so it's sort of breaking out of uh, the mold that of what we think is possible. Because we're in a phase of, of quantum transformation, literally. I mean, I, so it was, it was a powerful experience, yeah. Lisa, do you want to explain what soul raisings are for everyone? Well, um, David Christopher Lewis is a messenger for the Great White Brotherhood. Um, and he is uh, also the co one of the co-creators for the Heart Center community, which is light workers that are all around the world that, you know, pray together and dance together and have a lot of things going on. Anyway, so uh, one of the aspects that David does when he's here live, local, is he has these soul raising sessions, which he basically is... Um, He's a clear audience, and he listens, and he speaks for the Holy Spirit. And um, I 
have heard so many fine things about it. I've personally had a number of them, and uh, I know Dennis has, and um, you know I don't know who else Sarah has, but I bet you Marcus has. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Oh, anyway, the point is, is that um, it's a really good opportunity to, like Glenn said, check your path. Are you going the right direction? And we all desire the highest and best trajectory, which to me means the will of God. You know, it's 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 straight, it's strong, and it's true. And um, you know, we do have those doubts, and uh, sometimes we are in a position where we don't really know what to do next, and the Holy Spirit is very forthcoming with ideas. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you need a hint, you'll get it you know, and get an uplift in the process. It's a very uplift. That's the whole purpose of it, is to uplift your soul, help you get moving down the path a little bit faster, a little bit higher, and according to your ability to receive it, you will. And uh, it's unique. Each one of them is absolutely unique. And um, I've known David for, gosh, like 30 years. And the man is true blue, so you can trust him. So any, anything else? Uh, Sarah, uh, would you get the mic? Why don't you close in prayer and go out and sing? Or? Let us stand in honor of Almighty God, the will of God, and whatever it means for each of us individually, what we connect with. Um, in the name of the Christ, my money and presence, we call for the absolute sealing of all the beautiful energies that we receive this night. We call for them to be utilized for the highest and best, for the saving of souls everywhere, for the raising up the downtrodden, for the healing of those that require healing, and for the nurturing those that are maybe could use a hand. We accept this done according to God's holy will. We call for world peace. We accept peace within us individually and in our families and our communities and all of our interactions and we accept peace in this earth unqualified loving peace amen, amen. good night everyone and also we will be broadcasting again tomorrow at 7 30 for the divine mother worship service and the Kuan Yin rosary on thursday good night and thank you for joining and thank you for all your light work in bringing this peace to earth good night <laughs>